<laughs> well, I've always said fishing is fun, and we're about to have a lot of fun. I'm up here with Mike Martin. Mike is originally from Wisconsin. He's actually a Wisconsin Badgers defensive lineman, and he's now relocated to uh, Montana. And when I started talking about coming up to Fort Peck to fish lake trout, he was all for coming along. So the cool thing about these fish in this late October time period is, is that they come up fairly shallow. We're going to be probably fishing anywhere from 10, maybe out to 30 feet of water. Very accessible fish, fish that we can catch with crankbaits. And luckily, we got some of the new jointed flicker shads along, and I think they're going to tear these fish up. So far, so good. So I'm going to unhook this fish. We're going to get our lines back in the water, and we're going to show you the next bite. <laughs> And I tell you what, the monsters are in here. You know, this is a popular fishing area with all these lakes around here. <laughs> it's so awesome! Fort Peck is at the highest elevation for reservoirs that are part of the Missouri River system. It's the fifth largest man-made lake in the United States with more shoreline than the entire West Coast. How big is he? Come on, make the call. <laughs> because of its remote location, fishing pressure on Fort Peck is fairly light when compared to other reservoir waters. I can reach out and get him. <laughs> there we go. It's the confluence of all these factors that make it the perfect destination for really promising action across multiple species of fish. That's a nice one. He kind of didn't fight, then fought. He didn't fight and he was a nine pounder. Yeah. Started fighting, became a 19 pounder, and I think he ended up kind of right in between. Right in the middle. So today we're on Fort Peck Reservoir. We're in the northernmost stretch of the lake by the town of Fort Peck. The reason we're up here is to chase the lake trout. Lake trout, most people think of as a deep water fish. Downriggers, complicated to get to, difficult to reach. Today we're fishing them because in the fall they come in shallow to spawn. And this dam area has the deep water where they spend a lot of time in the summer, but it has shallow structure. These fish are moving up shallow to spawn, and we can use our walleye gear to target them. Under the lead. Clear this line out. Came over that little bit of a, like a saddle. There's a little bit of a hump outside of us. Came up a little shallower than I wanted, but just as it was coming up to that shallow, whoong. <laughs> Starting to take the bottom. I'll I'd get say the net. How far out were you? 150. 150. On lead. On lead. So that's five colors of lead. So I was trying to get down in that 25 foot zone. And I think this fish <clears throat> probably was coming up just as we were coming up. Well, he's heading towards your other. Not happy now. <laughs> yeah, he was thumping hard. Here he comes out, boy. He's nice, huh? Yeah, we got <laughs> Gotta pull you back in too, I guess. <laughs> got some wave action working too. <laughs> yeah. Just had this on some lead core because we're trying to fish out a little bit deeper, you know, on that 25, 28 foot of stuff, but the fl a jointed flicker shad won't go down that far, so I put it on lead core. You got in the right zone, I guess. Why don't you just unhook it out of the fish there? See it right there? Yep. There we go. <laughs> nice fish. And fought. I mean, he was coming in. As he was coming in, he, uh, you know, was kind of just gliding. And then all of a sudden, he just started to get that snaky kind of fight to them. And it was fun. Yeah, that rod doubled over and <laughs> that 9 6 rod. <laughs> That's a good fish there. It's fun. It's, just, it's fun fishing out here, you know? We'll get him back in. Down and out. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats. Fish the finest.
Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, accuracy matters. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. Lake trout are one of the few species of freshwater fish that spawn in the fall. During the summer months, they spend most of their time in the deeper, colder waters found beneath what is known as the thermocline, making specialized equipment such as downriggers a necessity to catch them. Look at this one. Wow. It is doubled over. <laughs> However, being up shallower during their spawn, standard walleye tackle becomes a viable option, which really opens up a laker bite to a whole new level of fun. Nice walleye. The big walleye. And he's off. <laughs> Just like that. Especially when you consider that lake trout and walleye tend to also share the same structure during this time frame, too. Well, I said that he was fighting different. I thought it was a lake trout because that's how they started to glide, but he never did pound his head that hard. He just bulldogged the whole way. He's a pretty one. Nice. Holy man, is that pretty. We're actually running two different rod setups and actually rod and line combination setups here because we're trying to fish along a piece of structure and doing a lot of curving and things. On my outside line, what I'm using is just a 10 pound fire line, no stretch line, the thin diameter lets my baits dive a little bit deeper. On the inside line, what I'm using is lead core, 18 pound lead core with a 15 foot, 10 pound test fire line leader. And the reason we're using two different line styles is for a couple different reasons. On the outside lines, we're running a little bit bigger lures. The 11 flicker minnows can dive deep. The fire line lets them dive a little bit deeper. We can get them down from 15 to 30 foot, just running them on that flat fire line. On the inside lines, we're running jointed flicker shads, and they don't dive quite as deep. So we're using the lead cord to actually bring them down to different depths. So keeping the lures close to the bottom seems to be real important with these two line setups so we can do that. But the other thing that using lead cord does, even if you're using all the same lures, you can run shorter lines on the lead cord. It doesn't take as much out. And where that's important is when you start doing that turns, if your lures are separated, the inside lines are running shorter, the outside runs are running a little longer, you can make turns and those lures don't tangle into each other. So by running these two different styles of setups, we're able to fairly effectively run four lines behind the boat, stay on the structure, and keep our lures down in the fish zone. Right here. Here, Mike, go ahead and take this one. I'll keep the boat going here. Got one on the lead? On the lead. This one's almost in. I might as well get rid of that. I'll get the. Oh, it came up over that hump. I'll get this one out of the way, I think, too. How's it feeling? It's feeling good. <laughs> Staying down. Nice. Doesn't want to come up. Uh, some of those littler ones come up, but just like every big fish you catch of any species, the big ones like to stay down. Grab that net for you here. Getting to be that time, isn't it? Yep. It's coming close. A little further. Yeah, maybe back up towards the front here. A little further, Mike. Nice fish. A little further. I got there him. There we go. There he is. <laughs> I got him. It's <laughs> a good Ooh, fish. That's a good fish. Yeah. Lead corn. Jointed. The jointed. Why don't you grab the players quick? Let me have those players. You can grab that fish. I'll get to try and get that one. Just the back hook. Easy, big girl. Boy. Easy. Oh, she grunted at me, too. Yeah, not, not too happy with there, us right it. now. Okay, lift her up. Yeah, that's a good one there. That's a good one there. And, and we just came up, we were out in that deeper stuff and came up over just right on that little bit of a hump, like 30, 32 foot, 32 that, foot That's hump. the hump we marked them on when we went out to the deeper water to get set yeah, up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then there's, and they hit so hard, it's just wonderful. <laughs> it's a good fish, it was a good fight. Yeah, yeah. She just didn't want to come up, just digging for the bottom. <laughs> Well, trying to get back to the depths. Talking about getting back to the depths, I guess we'll let her go. Sounds good. There she goes, back to the depths. So we're using the precision trolling app. The real 
Deal brought to you by Precision Trolling Data, giving anglers the real deal on crankbait diving depth information. Hey, I'd like to introduce you to a new line of walleye jigs that I developed for Strike King Lure Company. This lineup features a jig for every scenario and walleye jig fishing you're going to come across. The first jig that I want to talk about is a jig that's going to replace the standard ball head jig. What's unique about this jig and the rest of the jigs in the lineup is that it features a crater type bottom on it. And what that does is it helps to hold the jig head up in the water column. It glides a little bit more. Um, this feature goes all the way through the lineup. So we also have a structure head jig, which we're going to use in heavy wood situations. And then we have the weed or vegetation jig that we're going to use for pitching or any other various type of heavy vegetation situation you're going to run into for walleyes. The next head in this lineup is a football head jig, which is more common in bass fishing, but this thing has really stood out for situations where you have real snaggy bottom cover like we have in the Great Lakes, for example, with zebra mussels. This is a jig head that I'm going to use when I'm fishing plastics, trying to mimic more of like a goby along the bottom does a great job for coming cleanly through the, the um, heavy rocks. So check out this lineup from Strike King. You're going to find a jig for any situation that you're looking for. So obviously we're trolling for lake truck out here. And what we're doing is actually trolling on structure. So I've picked a particular depth, like for instance, right now we're in from 25 to 30 foot of water. We've got our bait set to run just above the bottom. So what I'm trying to do is control the boat so that those baits always stay in that 25 to 30 foot range. They aren't pounding the bottom. They aren't all over really deep water. And what I'm using to do that is, first of all, my kicker. I've set that real precisely with the eye troll so that my speed is running anywhere from about two to 2.2. And then I'm using my front trolling motor to actually do the steering. When the wind isn't blowing quite so hard, it's pretty easy to actually follow sideways in the wind, into the wind, with the wind. You can pretty much go any way you want. And by bumping up and down the speed on my trolling motor, I can do the fine adjustments I need to keep the speed right. But as the wind picks up like we've got right now, what I've found is that you actually got to switch over and just go to trolling pretty much with the wind. If you don't do that, what happens is, is you end up not pulling at a nice consistent speed speed and not keeping your baits in the right depth. So even though you might only get a, a little bit shorter pass by going with the wind, you're going to be real precise keeping those baits in the zone, keeping them going the right speed, and hopefully getting them big lake trout to bite. We'll get some, we'll get some clearance for you, Clarence. <laughs> All right. You know, I guess a really big one. They have a hard time twisting like the little ones, so he might be a big, big one. Feels like a nice fish. It does. It looks like a great fish. Is he starting to shake yet? It just giving me some big thumps. I'll right, get the net. There he is. Oh, it's a big, big fish. <laughs> and he's off. Oh, Don't just like that. Don't slap out of the net. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this thing. <laughs> and he beauty. came off right when he got to the net. Look at the size of this beast. Oh, man. This is a color that that ROI came up with. It looks like it's supposed to look like a sauger. So obviously, lake trout like saugers. Just look at this beast here. Look at this thing. Oh, that, <laughs> that is a monster. That looks exactly what it felt like. And it's a big a, fish. And they do have fish with teeth here. He's got teeth in there, don't he? Absolutely. Oh, man, look at the just heaviness of that fish. And he fought like that the whole way in, just down and dirty and just <laughs> Felt like I was hooked into an anchor for a little bit. <laughs> an anchor with some some legs. One of the tools we're using today, trolling, is a precision trolling app on your phone. Uh, we're using number 11 flicker minnows, and we're using a 10-pound fire line. So on the 10-pound fire line, we look at it, and we want to get about 30 feet down. It says 193 feet, so it allows us to right away get into the fish zone. Also allows us to switch to our other uh, rods, which are on lead core. The lead core rods, we want to we'll get target the same depth. So we go down to 30 feet on the lead core at two miles an hour, 115 feet back. So with the use of the precision trolling app, it allows us to be very efficient, very quick. All the research is done for us. We get to put our lines out and get into the fish. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine.
go boldly. Tracker boats fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. I just want to take a moment and talk about props. Not actually, not even props themselves, but in a safety system that's built into the props. If you were running down the lake and you hit a sunken log that you didn't see, or if you were going along shoreline and you inadvertently hit a boulder that was sticking up too high. In many instances, instead of bending the prop shaft, the safety system of a hub insert can end up saving that prop shaft. And it's meant so that when you hit on impact that these little teeth here will break away. This is a hub system for a 40 to 60 horsepower four-stroke Mercury, which is a very very popular engine size for pontoons and smaller fishing boats. Every prop is a little different, okay, but in this, this range, the hub system inserts from the back side of the prop. In other bigger boats, a lot of times they'll come in from the opposite direction. The next thing that you want to put into that prop hub system is this little O-ring right here. The O-ring itself just fits right in there. It's kind of uh, intuitive. And then you have this little insert here that fits right on top of that O-ring. The next thing that you will put in the system is a little lock washer, and that fits in. You'll see there's little teeth that engage. Now, this is called a spacer. Okay, the spacer actually goes between the prop and the engine, and each engine style has a little different shape spacer, and then the whole work slides onto the shaft, and then you use the nut to tighten it down. I would recommend to always carry a prop, or at the very least, carry a prop wrench and an extra hub kit. You can get these at your Mercury dealership. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I put them in the, one of the compartments in the boat and they always stay there. You can change that hub and you're back in business and ready to go and you can get back to the launch. Lake trout are a hard fighting freshwater fish by themselves, but add to this the uniqueness of catching them on walleye gear and you have a bite that is bound to be truly unforgettable. Well, with that fur line, you get all that, all the sensation of the fight and the lightweight rods and stuff. It just makes it a riot to be out here. Capitalizing on their shallower presence due to their fall spawn, Keith and Mike have discovered that these Fort Peck Lake trout not only have a taste for sauger, but that this reservoir structure provides an abundance of non-stop action from all kinds of fish with teeth. What? <laughs> what is this, a silent treatment or something? <laughs> you catch so many that you... I've, I've got one. <laughs> all right, excellent. <laughs> it's the old... <laughs> I'll clear the sled for you. <laughs> Good fish, heavy fish. Doesn't even say anything. Just, <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, you got one there. Matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, I think that one's got that hot tail on it, that little red tail on it. I've, we've seen that with walleyes too, where there's just that little bit of extra color. It's just sickly good. Almost looks like an injured tail. Yeah. Especially on them jointed, the way they wiggle around. In fact, I might have to switch this one over to that. <laughs> that extra bit of action, they really... So when people ask you what the forage is in Lake, in Fort Peck here, it's jointed flicker jo shad. Jointed, whatever yeah. looks like a jointed flicker shad is yeah. what they're eating. Yeah. Here's the swivel, we got about a 15 foot leader, so. Should be seeing the color of lake trout soon, there he is. Yeah, it feels a like a one. Feels like a good one. All right. I like getting out there for him because I'd hate to have him. In fact, look at he would have been off. The full he looks reach. already out, which makes it nice for him looking, I guess. Good look at this thing. Go ahead and grab that one, Mike. Look at that. Boy, this that's... one's even going to look big next to you. <laughs> that's a tanker. <laughs> and you're a big guy. <laughs> that is still fighting us. But this is that. Uh, 
lure here. It's got a, a red tail. I call it a fire tail or a hot tail on there. And sometimes that little bit of extra color, they just got a key on that. They think that's something good to bite. So They definitely like it today. But just ticking along the bottom a little bit. We're trying to run the baits really, really close to the bottom. And that seems to be something, uh, maybe when it hits the bottom, it kicks a little funny or something, and it's triggering them fish. So, all right. That's a good one. Look at the gut on that thing. Right there. <laughs> it just makes it a riot to be out here. This is a big, big lake trout. That's, That's a nice a fun one. fish. Very, very cool. <laughs> Looks like he took out three out of our four lines there. Flicker minnow, we got a jointed flicker shad, we got a juke, and we got one lake trout. <laughs> well, I think the trout decided that he wanted to head east, and the problem with that was we had three lines east, and he got two of them, and then he went back to the west, and then he went north-south, north-south, east-west in circles for a little bit, and uh, that caused quite a problem. But it's all very clear now. Very clear. We've, now that we've dug through the, uh, the bird's nest that was created, we, uh, we have a firm grip on what happened. One of the tools we're using today is a, no, oh, let me start over. So today we're on Fort Peck Reservoir. Okay, let me start over. How's it feel? Since it's my first, uh, first uh, ever lake trout on a shiver minnow, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a good fight on a that's six fun. foot spinning rod. <laughs> The next bite would like to thank the Fort Peck Marina, featuring great food specials and camping accommodations. The marina also has a great selection of tackle and easy reservoir access via a well-maintained boat launch. Check them out on Facebook for up-to-date fishing reports direct from anglers on this versatile and expansive western jewel of a fishery. It is an awesome place to start your next Fort Peck adventure. For more information, please call 406-526-3442.